one of your peers tells you some shit like that, like it hits different. I don't know. Trust me, especially um, if you, yeah, if you new musicians, especially. But if you're a non-musician watching this, uh, first of all, thank you. If you don't know who Cannibal Kids is, thank you very much for watching. Um, first yeah, let all, me let me try to let me level with a normie real quick. This is this <laughs> what I'm trying. This video is brought to you by Select a Ticket. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music and not so local music scene and the people that make it. My guest today is uh, the front man for a Florida-based indie pop, coastal pop band with edgy funk mel uh, influences. They were founded in 2014 from the ashes of a band called No Compromise and uh, their music has millions of streams and their live shows are always packed. A new, a new single and music video, Worms, dropped on February 24th. Make sure you go check that out. Please welcome to the show, Damien from Cannibal Kids. Hey, Damien. What's going on? Hey, what's going on, Josh? You definitely did your research. What's <laughs> Thank you very much for that. No worries. It's, you know, I have been called the next Nardwar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ambush people in their dressing room, though. So. <laughs> you so. can ambush us anytime you, you find us <laughs> in your city. Right. Show up with, a, I don't know what... Um, flowers or something here here anyway <laughs> so before we get into anything i have to ask why the name change um well um no compromise is a very very old project of mine it is um almost a decade now since uh since i was no compromise at the time uh we had different members in a different direction and um when when we wanted to rebrand and, and turn into something new um we were like we definitely need a new band name a new new appearance new aesthetics new everything so it was just kind of like uh my you know growing pains i guess you could say just the identity change definitely um i was just wondering because i don't know if you're, you're aware there's there's a seminal band from the 90s called fine young cannibals and that's immediately what yeah I yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I, I actually am influence. very, I am, I'm, I'm very aware. I wasn't influenced by them. I wasn't influenced by Cannibal Corpse, Hannibal Lecter, the <laughs> Fine Young Cannibals, none of them. I, I actually had very little knowledge on cannibal uh, culture um, before we came up with the name. Um, so it wasn't until afterwards that I started doing a lot of interviews that people continuously asked me questions about cannibals and I was like, I need to get my knowledge up on this stuff. <laughs> so. Knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Uh, Cause yeah, I honestly, uh, immediately I was like, I wonder if they somehow are like fans of young, fine young cannibals. And this is their kind of. Homage. They're great though. I mean, I'm, I'm a oh, fan. Yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. They broke a lot of ground. So, um, so your first show as a, as a band was a festival at the hard rock. Yes, yes. Um, you are 100% correct. We played uh, back in the day, there used to be a community of musicians called Rock Religion. And my manager at the time had thrown an event there. There used to be a company, I don't know if they're still around, they, used to, they were called Balcony TV. They did that event. And that was our first show. At this point, we'd already been playing in Miami for maybe about a year or less and started kind of making a little bit of waves. And then we booked that gig and we made that the show that was like, come see us. This is the new evolution. Yeah. Nice. Um, I want to ask kind of a usual interview question. I'm going to apologize in advance. This is one I, I always ask of all my prey and every musician hates this, this question. I kind of did this in the intro already, but how would you define your band's musical style? Elevate, go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Cannibal Kids is a... Uh, has a ton of variety. I don't, you know, we kind of float in between genres uh, of funk, uh, pop, indie pop. Uh, on this new project, we're pulling a lot from uh, alternative rock and a lot of alternative jazzier stuff. Um, took a lot of influence from Bossa Nova on this new album. So it's really all over the place. Um, the best way I can describe it is that I'm a music fan. You know, I, I just love 
the whole craft as a whole, and actually everybody in my band does. So we always end up evolving into different styles. So if you've been following us, you followed a garage band turn into this more, you know, ethereal kind of project. Right on. Um, and, and you can totally tell between the videos and the, just listening to the music that it's, there's a, a love of, you know, the songwriting craft there and, and all the different paths you can go down. Yeah. 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 That, that's my favorite part of the whole process is writing the music. Right on. Um, so tying hand in hand with that is, um, another question I asked, which is, I want to talk earliest musical influence. And what I'm talking about is what is that earliest memory you have where you said, I want to do that. Yeah. So, um, Actually, I had to go back a lot on this new record and think about things like that, kind of think about like the origin story. And it all started really with video game music, um, classic, the, the classic or Ocarina of Time soundtrack, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy. Um, these soundtracks were like the first melodies that I had stuck in my head and the first, my first independent introduction to music other than my mom listening to the radio or my family already being fans of music. This is like my own personal music that I fell in love with. Um, and then after that, around the, my middle school years, I fell in love with a lot of um, rock music, 90s rock music, um, classical music, folk music. And the first couple, the first CDs I ever bought were the Blue Album by Weezer, um, angles by the strokes and um i was a huge fan of this band called the frames who's fronted by an irish singer and songwriter glenn hansard he was by far like my biggest influence and um the guy that i really fell in love with when it came to music performance and songwriting he was my entire middle school i wanted to be like glenn hansard Cool. I haven't heard of him or the frames. And uh, the, one of the reasons I love doing these shows and asking that question is that I hear these acts that I'm like, well, now I put that on the list. I have to go check it out. <laughs> yeah, they're great. They're great. Yeah. They're, so, they're like a Dublin, a big, huge band in Dublin. Dublin. Because uh, all that Irish you have in you, right? <laughs> so, uh, first of all, touch it on two things. Uh, what you just mentioned about, you know, um, game music and your mom and uh, just the general nerdery of everything. I wanted to say, first of all, happy birthday to your mom. Just happened. It's, it's, it's happening actually in two hours. It's happening in two hours. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I was, I was early. So, oh, you really are. I, okay. I see you. I see you. You're, you're, you're getting those Nardward credits. I see it. It, it wasn't a, it wasn't yeah. uh, nameless, or it wasn't baseless. You really are. That hey, was crazy. You know, it's out there. It's out there. Uh, the other thing <laughs> is, your whole band seems to be proud weebs, nerds, and cosplayers, and I think that that's awesome. Yeah, well, I, I probably am the biggest one. I, I really wouldn't consider myself a weeb. I'm, I'm, I'm of the old school weeb sense. I was a mega Naruto fan, you know, back in 2002. Right. Um, and the anime boom happened post 2013 or around 2012 not that i'm a hipster when it comes to anime i, I just yeah. i was obsessed as a child it continued until like my late teen years and then it kind of fell off on all the current stuff that's going on right now but i grew up going to every convention every summer that happened in miami and uh i loved it it was it was it was like a niche internet culture but yeah, I mean, we're all nerds in our own right. Like everybody's at everybody's a video game nerd. That is true. Mm. So, I, I I have a weird question for you. Go ahead. How much is the tuition at Cannibal City Community College? Uh, well, you know, actually, in Cannibal City Community College, uh, billionaire taxpayers pay for everybody's college tuition. So nice. it's it's completely for free. It's completely for free. Noise. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Oh man. Um. All right. So uh, moving on to more normal kind of question here. Uh, what is on the horizon for you guys? That's the 
people should need to know about. And bear in mind, this interview is probably going to post in about a month. Okay, cool. Um, at this point, we will be promoting our next single, uh, No More Hills to Die On. Uh, you might even get to the announcement before I do. I am working on my next album, uh, which also I have not officially announced yet. So anybody who hears this interview is going to get that exclusive. Nice. I have been working tirelessly on this new record. It's my junior record, my third album. And I basically pulled all the stops out for this one, meaning that everything every conceivable creative idea i have at this very moment i'm trying to capsulate it so i wrote the record over the span of a year and then really anchored down uh at the last four months of last year and then recorded and produced the whole album in one month and then now we're mixing and mastering the record as we speak that sounds awesome and you know if you want to send it to me like ahead of time i'll be sure. happy to review, review video and drop it when the album or when the uh, when it releases i I, I would love for you to listen to it i think um you know a part of what is tough about being an artist is that often when you release a song you are already past it personally and your audience is just getting it now but what i really wanted to do was get the timing right for this album and make it feel especially current with who I am right now. And um, the main thing that I want people to take away from all this new music is the hardship and musicianship that I wanted represented on the album. I've got some of the best players in all of uh, Florida on this album. And um, I, I, I literally reached, you know, when they say like, damn, bro, like you really reached you were reaching for something crazy. I, I reached to the to the deepest places for this one. So I hope people can recognize that. Excellent. And and I agree with everything you said regarding like by the time people get it, you're kind of already over it. Uh that's what things like TikTok are so awesome because you can be like put it out almost immediately after you write it, you know, or even write sure. it on a live or something. So um cool. Before we get into anything else. We have a quick message here from uh, Future Josh, so listen up. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. Do you hear that? The percussive smack of rubber on wood? The annoying squeak squeak of sneakers? It must be basketball season. And guess what? Select a Ticket is here to save you some cash. Select a Ticket has the best seats and best prices available for any event, including concerts, Broadway shows, and of course, sporting events. Experience the difference with selectaticket.com and their all-in pricing with no added fees at checkout and no delivery fees. That means the price you see is the price you pay. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6 and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off every purchase over $100 on merchandise and tickets to your next NBA game. Just enter coupon code NBA10 at checkout. Thanks to Select a Ticket for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back, and if that sponsor spot interested you at all and you really want to you know, help support the channel, please click the link down in the description. That is the best way that you can support. The other way you can support is by clicking the Room 6 social media link down in the description to get things like Room 6 merch, Make Music Not Excuses, and, and other things that I've designed, um, or become a patron on Patreon, or buy one of my CDs. What the hell? <laughs> in the meantime, we're going to move forward here, and if you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, just like Damien, hit me up using the email address down in the description or that Room 6 social media link, and uh, we'll have some fun. Now then, back to you. Room 6 whiskey. Wait, not a nice. <laughs> <laughs> So, did you ever get to wear a cape on stage? Uh, um, you know, I think I might have something really special to show. Give me, give me a second. I, uh, oh, I, oh, didn't oh. Exactly, I didn't exactly wear a cape. Um, although it is, it, that will happen eventually. I have this, my friend, John Diaz, he's a wonderful artist. He actually made me this cape, um, uh, which is a, it's a half cape, half coat. Um, he awesome. made this for me on my last tour, um, in March of last year. And, um, this is the closest I've gotten to wearing a cape on stage. Although it is my dream. I don't know who told you that. I guess it's fucking hilarious. 
Uh, That's crazy. I, 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 I'm just trying to live up to my Patronus Sean Evans from Hot Ones. <laughs> Damn. That's awesome. That, that, and that is really, I love that. And the colors suit you perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, he, he, he popped off on that. That was great. It was a little difficult to play with, so I only ever wore it once. And uh, I think I was in Seattle when I wore that. Uh, but it was it was it was sick, and it actually was at the perfect length because usually, I, I sometimes I wear a trench coat on stage or like a big ass coat. Yeah. And uh, the tough part about that is that I wear heavy ass boots, and sometimes I'm just like ripping holes at the bottom of my uh, trench coat. So one must yeah, suffer for fashion and art. Yes, yeah. <laughs> beauty is pain, yeah. Beauty, yes, beauty is pain. All right. Um, I want to talk about what's your favorite show memory uh, performing in Cannibal Kids? Uh, of all time or recently? Yeah, or of all time. It could be like that checked off a lot of my rock star checklist things or or that went way off the rails or, you know, Damn. whatever. Yeah, you know, you know I, I always wish whenever I get these, like I had more time to think, but in general, in general, um, the thing that the thing that always surprises me is the day that we release a song, the we usually play it within one day or less than 48 hours after the song comes out. Uh, we usually are playing in front of a live audience. And recently we got to play Worms in Miami and I was so it always surprises me how quickly people learn lyrics and learn the whole song and you know that song is uh, a very emotional song for me so when i was hearing the audience like scream the chorus back at me i i was just overwhelmed and had tears in my eyes i was like i can't oh. can't believe it you know i mean I'm i don't know that jealous. stuff always that stuff always blows me away and then um uh the other thing is I'm not going to front with you, man. You know, when your favorite bands or the bands that you look up to, your peers, give you compliments after your set, like genuine compliments, ones that are not like, you know, you're six, eight, you know, like something that they say is pretty real. That shit always gets me because, uh, man, that male affirmation, it just, it just hits different. You know? Yeah, it does. <laughs> that male yeah, affirmation I, hits different, I'm, man. Oh, well, I got to be male, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying, man? You yeah, know, no. When, when one, of your, one of your peers tells you some shit like that, like it hits different. I don't know. Trust me, especially um, if, you, yeah, if you knew musicians, especially, but if you're a non musician watching this, uh, first of all, thank you. If you don't know who Cannibal Kids is, thank you very much for watching. Um, first yeah, let, all, me, let me try to, let me level with the normie real quick. This is this <laughs> what I'm trying to, If you're at the gym, if you're at the gym and a random guy comes up to you and says, nice form. You look tight. That will put you on a high beyond any other compliment yep. you could get. Let you know what I'm saying? That, this is what I'm saying. Let me just move the pin down one more plate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I got to push 25 more pounds right now. Yeah, sweet. Um, I, I, I know what you mean, and it's – I haven't had it where people were screaming my lyrics back at me, but I have had somebody that I respect. Like every time I see a particular band play – you're always like, what am I doing with my instrument? You know, what? Why yeah. am I not this good? Sure. And when when somebody like that says, um, and, and they have like they have your album because you did a CD swap or whatever, they're like they're like I really like the production on the second song. You're just like, yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, something real, something real. I, I recently I had somebody send me a really long message about the evolution of my lyrics and how they. He was oh, like, wow. you know, your your lyrics have improved so much and. The imagery that, that you're painting, man. I was wow. like, fuck, man. I, I mean, this is a peer of mine, so just hearing that was like, right. you know, it's And let awesome. me tell you, awesome. especially if you're a non-musician or, or a new musician, the imposter syndrome you're feeling is so real. It, sure. we, we all have it. We all have it. We all get it. We're all nervous before we perform. We're more nervous afterwards because we got to talk to people. Like, that's how it is sure. for me anyway. For um, sure. Yeah. No, I, I agree to you. I mean, yeah. It took me until – probably probably two and a half years ago where i was like i need to quit everything and only do music mm -hmm. that i was like feeling that tight imposter syndrome for sure and even even now it comes in waves you know it comes in waves yeah trust me being a youtuber even like i i made this make music no excuses because of all that back there that i have to remind myself stop editing go 
do something, even if it's just running <laughs> go shed a little it. bit. Yeah, even if, <laughs> yeah, go shed a little. Go play a cover song, whatever. Go make the music that inspired or, you to, yeah. you know, do this in the to first do place. Do it in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. So, a couple more questions left, then we're gonna get you to bed, young man. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Number one, which came first, acting or music? Um, definitely, definitely. Well, you know, in some ways, probably acting, probably acting. I, 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 uh, my, I come from a family of immigrants and blue collar workers. Okay. I'm, I'm like a second generation, uh, immigrant, Mexican migrant worker, whatever you want to say. Nobody in my family, my entire life, uh, had an instrument. We were music fans. You know what I'm saying? We were media fans. Movies were always on. Music was always on. We were consuming culture left and right. Like we was always in the, on the cutting edge of culture. You know, that's the kind of family I grew up in. Um, so whether it was like Eminem first coming out or 50 Cent or whatever, like the new movie that was coming out, cartoon, whatever, my family was always like there with it. Um, at least that's the way I remember it. So in a lot of ways, I would – I was a TV kid growing up, so I sat in front of a TV and watched – every conceivable cartoon on Nickelodeon Cartoon Network. I knew every single line from every single one of my favorite cartoons. I memorized those cartoons and I would say them and I would act them out. And I think that kind of like had a lot to do with like where my comedy comes from and like how I started acting. So in a lot of ways, I had that entertainer birthed in me from from probably consuming so much media as a, as a young person. And then it really didn't – the music stuff didn't really start until I was 10. Uh, my aunt, um, Sarah, she had inherited a guitar from her uh, father who had passed away, and she had a guitar at her house. It was the first instrument I ever came across, um, of, of course, from keyboards and shit like that you see around the house. But you know, nobody had an instrument. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, she, so she was learning guitar, and that's that's where it all started. Is I was watching over her shoulder and looking at her hands and seeing how she was doing it, and she would allow me to play. And uh, she actually still owns that guitar. I was just over at her house not too long ago. I was playing it's it a, again. A, a, acoustic. An acoustic uh, first a... starter kit Ibanez. It is. Uh, what more special? Ibanez, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, super thin. The guitar strings are shot dead. They haven't been changed in four years. Like, just mm -hmm. you're playing with liquid pennies. Like, you know, taste it's, it's, it's awful. Yeah. But anyways, uh, so it's funny, like you, that you asked me that because in, in many ways it was acting and then music, but then in a professional way it was music and then acting. Right on, and that's that's a little different than what I normally hear, especially from um latin culture households mexican households a lot of times yeah. I, I get people that say oh well you know i grew up and it was you know music all the time mariachi this and my my my, my yeah, uncle, yeah, yeah. My, my uncle played the bass in a mariachi band or this and right that. right yeah and, and so well, my that, family my family would would like rent mariachi bands to come out for birthday parties or mostly for funerals unfortunately um but in a lot of ways wow. those were those oh, were some of the <laughs> those were for some of the yeah that that's extremely accurate actually um in a lot of ways that was some of the first live music i ever saw um but again like my first introduction to an instrument was my aunt and uh at the moment that i got to play her guitar i begged for guitar and i got one for my 11th birthday oh i had kind of a sort of similar thing but mine was weird because my dad had a trumpet i had no clue he owned like he played trumpet apparently when he was younger. Never heard oh, yeah. of to this day. My my dad, my father passed away a while ago, but I never heard to this day how the trumpet came into his possession, when he played, where where anything. Like I, he wasn't a musician. Yeah, but back in the to... day, back in the day, everybody played an instrument. Like like right? we, it's it's low key, um, like generation Y, that like instruments kind of fizzled yeah. out. Like, I, well, I, the way I look at it is like everybody played guitar up until 2001, and then well, nobody touched a guitar again until 2010, and it was it was this weird time for uh, for music at large. There wasn't that many 
there was a lot of musicians, of course, but mm-hmm. not nearly as much as there is now. I feel like music has gone through like its fifth renaissance now with TikTok and YouTube and, and oh, Instagram. Definitely. Everybody's a fucking in- a musician now. But I mean, it wasn't that way for me when I was, you know, eight years old up until like 15, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm 50, okay? I'm the last of five children. So my dad was definitely like boomer central. But um, TikTok is teaching me things and introducing me to instruments I didn't know existed. Or, you know, just I'm seeing 20 somethings that are performing these complicated pieces on like concertinas and harpsichord and stuff and i'm like i'm like this is amazing this is a renaissance like you said um all right so moving on last question you ready go ahead you made it hey so we're going to circle back to uh, um the, the earliest musical influence question a little bit and this is a question i ask of all my prey i like to ask this as the last question let's pretend we're talking to little damien Okay, the little sure. Damon that, that got that guitar, and it's like, I want to try that. I, I, want, a, I want a guitar. And, and that earliest musical influence, okay? You decide, I'm going to try making music. What is one thing that you wish someone had told you before you moved on down this twisted road called music? And don't say change your strings. <laughs> um, I really wish I had gone to some kind of music school before um, I went to college. Um Unfortunately, it was a goal of mine as a young kid to go to school for music. I just, no opportunity arose, but I wish that I had studied and learned my theory and learned my technique before going to college because it really wasn't until college that things really started clicking and I started to really grow exponentially. Um, So there's that. And number two, um, I would tell them that I I wish I would have tried harder sooner. You know, mm. I think I, I mean I, I I my knowing me like I was always pushing full cylinder every time, but there were certain years of my life that I wish that um, well I don't know actually maybe not maybe not. Now I think about it, like, I I really did push at every year or every opportunity I could. It's just, I don't know. You look back and you're like, you know, what if? Maybe I should have shed more. Maybe I should have played more. But, uh, yep. Yeah, you know. But maybe my my third thing would say is um, start playing piano. That's what I would have said. I would have said, fuck the guitar, play piano. (laughs) That's what I said. I would have said that to Yeah, yeah. Like many kid, I started at seven taking piano lessons. And then eventually, my dad, finishing that real quick, my dad, uh, oh, by the way, all good tips. You new musicians out there, listen to this man. Um, but I started piano, and then my dad took this trumpet. I never even saw it. Just one day, he comes back with this guitar case from a pawn shop that he traded the trumpet into. I still have no idea if there was even a real trumpet. I don't know. And the, it was, I wish I had this just for the nostalgia, if nothing else. It was one of those guitar cases that had an amp built into the amp, uh, the, 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 the case. Right, right, right. I mean, I've seen like those. Shit, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, the, the thing that's tough for, for modern musicians and just anybody in general um, is that what was really what was really tough for me was I was like, oh, I need to build a career on the side of music. So mm-hmm. in the event that music doesn't work out, um, I have this other career to bounce back from. But the truth is you can't fucking do that. You can't. You, you, music needs to be the only career choice. It needs to be the only plan. I know a lot of people are going to say that might not be the best advice or it might be controversial. But in my experience, all of the, of the best musicians that I'm surrounded by, the ones with the most respect, the ones with the most uh, success in their career, were the ones that dedicated their life to the craft very early on. And, um, yeah, I mean, and, and I'm not talking about people who fucking popped off on TikTok. I'm talking about schooled musical soldiers, people who are experienced in performing, experienced with the craft. They understand the art form in an intricate way. It's not somebody who just kind of popped off in the last year, somebody who is, um, you know, 
a seasoned veteran is what I like to call them. Right. The ones who's, who they've been through the power strip on stage went out all of a sudden in the middle of your set. Every, every single situation. You know what I mean? And yeah. the sooner yeah. you get through that, like by hopefully by like 25, you're ready to really kick it with the majors. <laughs> and and yeah. honestly, you're, you're kind of digging into my heart a little bit because I was late to that. I, I figured that out after I already was like happily married and had a kid and a job. And, you know, I was like, well, okay, I, I'm putting this album out. But I can't just go on tour. I can't just live in my car or whatever. I know. Oh, hey, man, but it's being... never too late. You can still you can still make it, man. Anybody can make it, especially yeah. now with fucking TikTok. You can just go oh, spam your song a million times, and one of them will go viral. I promise you. That's, <laughs> that's what this is here for, is to remind me. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I just got to edit, edit one more video. <laughs> <laughs> so right on. Oh, well, Damien, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for watching if you want to be on the channel, like I said, hit me up. And if you want to know more about Cannibal Kids and what Damien's doing, check out all the uh, social media in the description or the uh, the links down in the description, rather. And definitely, definitely pick up Worms. Check it out. It's an awesome music video. It's an awesome single. Uh, um, other yes, than that, thank I, you. I think I think we're going to see a music video uh, right after this, aren't we? Yes, please. Uh, check it out. It's the hardest fucking video I've ever made. I, we all busted our ass for it. We spent way too much money on it. <laughs> um, go far my song, please. Just leave it on repeat all night long. Um, and that's it. That's all I got to say. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Josh, for having me. It was really, it was a no pleasure. Worries. In, uh, in the meantime, remember to be amazing. And uh, we'll see you in the outro right after the music video. On your own, you feast the finest things in life. Take a walk down. I want to thank Damien from Cannibal Kids for coming on the show. It was a great interview and an awesome music video. If you want to know more about them, check out their social media links down in the description. And uh, yeah, if you want to know more about Room 6, 
click the uh, Room 6 social media link. And if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you would like to subscribe, it really does make a difference, please click up there and don't forget to ring the bell. And if you want to hear my own music, which is completely different than Cannibal Kids, click over there. And then, other than that, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6.